I'm going to invite my friends to join uh, me on the panel. So uh, Matt and Joe and Helen and Michelle and Matt and Phil. Where are you, Phil? There we go. Uh, while they're coming, I'll just uh, introduce Phil to you. Phil Gossett is part of our innovation team, uh, part of the Nationwide Open Bank of a Good Team. You'll see the matching T-shirts. Um, <laughs> we'll resist any joking. Um, do come and uh, take a seat on the stage. Thank you. I'll work out where I stand in a moment. We didn't warn everybody we were using stools, so sorry. It doesn't matter what order you're in, though. So this is the, the Q&A session, and as with any event, the person panel chairing, panelling the Q&A is hoping that there's some questions in the audience. Um, can you wave at me if you think you're about to ask a question? All right, so there's, okay. Okay, so there's two or three ready. That's fantastic. Can I ask the first question, though? Because, uh, <laughs> Phil, <laughs> I'll come to you next. Uh, Phil, um, you have already had some people ask you over there. I already had some people ask you over there, and some people have already emailed in. This is all well and good, but how are we handling IP? Okay, so... Was that a um, question? Have I just taken a question off of someone? Yeah. Excellent, Was there that we go. everybody's question? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's fun to talk to people about this because you say to them, so Nationwide isn't in this to make any money. And they go, yeah, right. Yeah. They say, no, no, we're really not in this to make any money. We're in this to promote a social good. We're a mutual, we're not a business. That's what we're about. So when it comes to IP, if you're in the team that generates the IP, you will own the IP. Nationwide won't own it, you will own it. The only thing that we ask is that you grant Nationwide free licence to use that IP, and that's to use it for the Open Banking for Good challenge. The reason for that is if we fund you to do some work through which some IP is generated and the process towards a solution, and then you leave, we want to still have the ability to go ahead and develop that solution for social good. So you, if you come in, the IP you bring is your IP, any IP that's generated is your IP, just give Open Banking for Good free license to use it. And it's only nationwide, we'll only use it towards Open Banking for Good. If our offer is access to our 15 million members, we're going to have to be able to get it to our members somehow, aren't we? And that's yes, how we're going to need to do it. Fantastic. Thank you. I can see questions here. Uh, first, hands up, we're over here, though. Hi. Um, what, what's your question? Where are you from? There are some Rogan mics coming. Hi, Michael Hobbs from Flow Fintech. Um, really enjoyed it. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I've worked in the technology industry for a long time now, and I think, I'm not going to put a number on it, uh, but I think this is probably some of the most challenging areas that, um, I, that I've encountered in terms of uh, design. I also think that the, the digital industry as a whole have, has largely ignored these uh, sorts of issues, uh, partly because uh, of perceptions around profitability, partly perhaps because they're just difficult, right? Could I ask um, everybody who's spoken... What inputs you intend to give to the, the fintechs um, who are going to participate in this? Helen, you, you, you kind of answered this uh, in, in, in your speech. But I think we're going to need quite a lot of input from you, uh, particularly around you know, understanding this audience. Because um, you know, I, I have a reason, well, had a reasonable income, and, income until I started doing uh, fintech <laughs> stuff. I, I don't naturally... Um, I don't deeply understand this audience. How can you help us uh, get to grips with the audience? Uh, and how can you help us increase our understanding of it in order to design well? Great question. I think there's a, before I hand to any panelist, um, there's a bit in there about the design of the challenge itself in terms of uh, where, in the, where in the maturity of the process can a business or a fintech be? to get what different kinds of help. So can I hand to Phil first? Well, maybe you guys scratch your head and think about what one thing can I say in response? Yes, okay. Um, so one of the stipulations is that we've tried to, or we've tried to enforce an agile process, and that's agile with a small a, which basically means to get users involved at least every fortnight. So for the, certainly to be involved in the start of the process. <coughs> so if, to help define the problem that you're trying to solve, or to make that very clear, first of all, and then to stay involved in the solution, the generating of the solution of that. And the reason why you keep them involved every two weeks is because I know how easy it is to get your eye off the ball because you suddenly see something else you can chase. And actually, we're, we're doing this to, as Rachel would say, shift the dial on some very uh, serious social issues. 
And what we want to do is to keep the user community engaged at every step along that journey to make sure that when we get to the end and we've got a solution we can scale, that actually we know it's going to meet those needs. So, um, Matt, what expertise does the Money Advice Trust have in completing income expenditure statements <laughs> that you can help people understand? Well, I think it's a great question. And I think um, you can read... You've heard so much research from all of us. You can read all the statistics you like. Um, the best way to get to grips with what debt advice is about and what the challenges people have is to listen into calls or to sit with an advisor. So for, from the National Debt Line perspective, we'd be more than happy. We'll talk to about the process, but at some point, you'd be very welcome to come and do that um, and actually hear how, uh, you know, back to Gareth's point about the empathy thing, really, how difficult some of those conversations are, how difficult some of the circumstances that people are in. Uh, call listening is one way we could we could facilitate that, and then obviously information about how uh, our systems work. You know, again in uh, layers and with nationwide, we can make that information available to because we want to make the most out of this opportunity. So we'd, we'd be very open to that. So uh, just before I ask Joe a question in line with your question, sir, um, the successful entrants will absolutely have arranged access with these charities throughout the life of the program. Okay, so uh, my commitment to these guys was, <laughs> was um, don't feel like you're about to have to enter into 60 different bilaterals to come and listen to your calls uh, or read, read into your research. Is why we wanted to be able to stand them up at this seminar event today, why we want to make uh, all that information available, <coughs> why I'm going to ask them to give me digital links to all the collateral that they brought to put on the ob for g website so you and the people who were oversubscribed and couldn't be here can access and engage with that before submitting application. Uh, Joe, uh, yeah. what kind of visibility might a successful applicant be so able to get to income smoothing? The kind answer of is basically it depends what you want, what you what you want to do. So I think if you have got a service already that you're saying we want to build some add-ons or some plugins, but we don't know what, I think it's sort of insight. If it's we have a service that we think is bloody good, but actually we our, we our customer acquisition, we're just picking up sort of really savvy people from the odd bit of marketing we can do. We're not actually getting those clients. I think there's a different proposition there. I think the sort of the best version of this for me is that we're able to sort of put whatever the product is in front or just in front of clients and then test sort of do they want it when they, you know, when they start using it, how they use it, whether it's useful, what their outcomes were at the end as a sort of, as, uh, I think the best sort of way to sort of think about that is a sort of sandbox. So you say citizens advice client, you have a sort of cl a sandbox of citizens advice clients and they are, as you sort of say, they're people who probably aren't natural users of these types of services. They're not the types of, they, they're living different financial lives to the people building those services. And hopefully that adds some insight, which is either this was bloody useful and people, you know, the people have got really good, you know, really good outcomes from that. Or actually everybody dropped off it in a week because, you know, actually you, you couldn't bring in benefits income into your app. So that it was useless to them. You know, they, they only a third of their income was actually, or, you know, so whatever those problems are. And then I think it's working with you to sort of iron out those problems. But I think anywhere from the sort of this is these are the types of thing you're trying to solve to a sort of test and evaluation of what the product is, depending on where you are in your own um, sort of building journey. So the trust Contact centre, deep expertise in INEs, designed the original common financial statement yeah. beforehand. Um, sit as advice, effectively a sandbox of clients as well as your deep research base. Helen, you've already articulated your own mental yeah. health um, lived experience uh, group and your own deep research. Um, you can also add, sorry, just that yeah. the, so the, the research report that we've brought loads of copies with us was intended for this purpose. So that whole report is intended to take the experiences of people with mental health problems, understand how that can affect how you manage your money, map what the potential for fintech is to help and to come up with some easily digestible kind of information that you could use to guide you in the development of it. So hopefully that in itself will be a useful tool. Um, just to say as well, this isn't an entirely new audience for you. You know, one in four of your existing users have mental health problems and about 8% of them are in financial difficulty. So there might be something that any of us on the panel could do to help you understand the experiences of those existing users as well. How about you, Michelle? Have you got any thoughts uh, about I mean, I think similar, one thing for free? Yeah, I think similarly to everybody else, we've obviously got research and insight that, we, that we're happy to share. Um, and we've also, obviously, we don't have clients who are in debt. That's not how we work. But we do have people who are willing to come and talk about money and think about money. And so particularly if you're... Your solutions are about particular types of people. We have access to lots of different types of vulnerable 
adults. So, you know, as I said earlier, it could be, you know, whatever types of person that you're, you're hoping to target and, and equally just general adults um, in, a, in an employer or in a workplace type environment. So we can facilitate that. Thank you very much. And there was a question over here in, uh, I think the gentleman with the white shirt was first. And is there someone over here as well that we can bring a second mic to? Um, Green Jumper, please. Hi, uh, I'm Rafa. I'm the founder of an artificial intelligence platform for open banking. And the question that I have for the panel is, uh, technology is no, is no longer the, the, uh, the barrier to some of this innovation, but ethical considerations that we need to be taking into account. So, for instance, some of the prototypes we're developing are spooking ourselves in terms of some of the learnings, and we're the ones developing it. They're very, very useful. They're very uh, easy right thing to do. But the question that I have is, uh, what kind of support uh, could we have if we were to, to participate in this program to ensure that those ethical concerns are properly handled, because they're quite fundamental. And some of the things we won't be able to explain. They work, but you cannot really explain why certain things work. That's a great question. Before I bring it to the panel, can we hear the second question? Can you hear me? Yes, we yep. can. So my name is Nevin McBride. I work for Javing, who are a data science company. So this is a question more for Nationwide themselves. So would Nationwide be willing to supply anonymized data of their own customers that perhaps reflect the, the sort of uh, the, the, the guys are in debt? I think you talked earlier on about 10,000 customers who were on in the gig economy. Would you be willing to supply that data to, to us to support building a solution? Great. Thank you very much. Um, so I'll be coming to a nod from Rachel and Matt on that second question. Um, in terms of the uh, ethics, I might need to come to you first as well, Matt, in terms of your interactions with, for Nationwide with the Open Banking Implementation Entity, for example, and the consumer groups access that they have there. Have you got a thought about how you might answer that question about helping people with navigating the ethics question? You're having to do it yourself for our own stuff, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, look, it's part of everything we have to do. So the way that the service from an open banking industry perspective is being designed, we have um, Faith Reynolds, who, who, uh, who sits on that, represents the customer experience, and that embeds um, ethics within the design of those services. And then from, from the society's perspective, the design process that we follow needs to reinforce that at every point. One of the things I think that we can offer as a society as, as you go through this programme is access to some of the work we've already done, some of the expertise, te technical expertise, but also design expertise that, that, that we are building for ourselves, you know, quite honestly. I know. We invited Faith. She really, really wanted to be here because she's really excited about what we're doing. I think Daniel, Daniel Jenkins, mm. Daniel? He was here. Daniel was here. Yeah. Uh, so a colleague of uh, Faith from the implementation mm. entity. Uh, we're, I'm in regular touch with Faith. Mm. Uh, so the, the ethics is clearly something, uh, and that's the beauty of partnering these charities with us. If we only invited you to stand up and talk to us and preach to us, but then not involve you for the rest of the year-long process, then we'd struggle to have those ethical mm. debates and nuances. But your ongoing commitment will really help us offer that to the successful entrance. We, so we also sit on the consumer group of the Open Banking Implementation Entity. And so these are some of the questions that we're grappling with all the time. And that's one of the reasons why we created those <coughs> principles for develop, developing fintech that helps and supports people with mental health problems. Um, there are other questions beyond that around privacy, obviously, and around interpreting uh, and making assumptions about people's health or kind of other circumstances based on their data. Uh, we have some work coming up next year, which will go into some of this in more depth. I'm hoping that the timings will work reasonably well with this. So keep in touch with us on that because we would love to get you more involved when we get into that. And as, as Helen said, I think most of us are on the consumer group. So we, obviously we have our own expertise and our own views, and but we can share with, with the others. And obviously having specific <coughs> examples of things, which hopefully we will get to, will be really helpful in terms of actually articulating and really answering those questions. Great, so thanks for ethics. Uh, in terms of access to anonymised nationwide data for successful entrance with NDAs both ways and so on, does that sound like something that we can be supporting through the course of this programme, if it's yeah, appropriate yes, to the bill? Yes, that's something we've done working with partners before. There are, there are things that we need to consider before we do that, quite obviously, but yeah, yes, it's possible. Great, nice simple question and a simple answer. That's fantastic. Uh, so I've got a question here in the white shirt, and can we bring a mic uh, to uh, you first and then hand it back to the green shirt? Uh, so white shirt, how are you white shirt? 
<laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, I'm Lindsay White from uh, Yapoli, the API technology provider. Um, really enjoyed all of your presentations. I've got a question about the tightrope that needs to be walked between legal advice and financial advice. Um, there's a lot of apps perhaps um, being built in this audience as we speak that want to be able to say to people, um, you spent 200 quid on this this month, um, stop doing it, think about this. And inevitably there will be clients that you've dealt with in the past that have said, look, I took your advice, it didn't work. Um, it'd be quite interesting to hear from yourselves, given that we grapple with and constantly discussing things with the FCA from their point of view, from you guys, um, what what your sort of experience has been like, how expressly you state from the beginning of these interactions, you know, this is not legal advice, or indeed if it is, it'd be interesting to see you know, where you stand. Thank you. So question on the regulatory landscape in yeah, terms of sort responsibility. Of, by by legal advice, advice, do you mean financial, debt advice and financial advice? Or, yes. Yeah. So I guess the sort of, I think the sort of like, so systems advice doesn't give financial advice. So you wouldn't be telling someone pick a like choose a product, um, but you are. But then debt advice is a sort of a, a regulated. You know, you, you need you need sort of permission from the FCA to give debt advice. Um, and, and confusingly, the FCA call that debt counselling as well. Just to yeah. throw in another term there. So. And uh, confusingly, and it's not really just debt advice. So, yeah, so indeed, yeah. we we we're not the other guys are regulated as debt counsellors. We're not. So we have to we have to walk that tightrope, and it's bloody difficult. Um, and we have had many conversations with the FCA, so we cannot say, because we don't have that authorisation, we cannot say, don't, you know, you look like you're spending a lot of money in Starbucks, stop, and that will help you pay off that credit card. That's debt counselling and I can't do it. So I completely understand the problem and it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> How do you think we might solve some of that problem in onboarding onto an app or something like that, Joe? So I think I, think, I guess the, 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 the answer, you know, those things are there for a reason. So the answer is to get the permission and, and sort of do it right. Is this like, uh, so that, you know, lots of people do, you know, do that. Um, and that, that there, there's no sort of quick solution to that. I guess there's, there's, possibly, um, there's possibly sort of the opportunity there for partnerships. So for sort of, say, for linking in sort of other people's advice or decision tree with different bits of technology. So, mm -hmm. so you know, so two groups of people. So you're sort of, you're working within someone else's FCA regulatory permission. I also think it's, it's I mean, I, you could, you can argue get the permission to do it right, but I would argue we're not debt counsellors and you mm -hmm. probably don't want to be a debt counsellor. Um, so there's a, I personally think there's also potentially a c capacity for us to, Try again with the FCA um, because I think it's a nonsense to be honest. As things currently stand, that it is a problem, um, and you're not giving debt advice if you're just saying you have a credit card and you might want to pay it off yeah. quicker than you are. I, I don't believe. So there's there's a number of different touch points where we might be able to solve that. Whether that's in you, the user signs up to the app and acknowledges that they're not receiving advice and you're not on the hook. There might be that what you build powers a solution that these guys deliver. Yeah. There might be some kind of uh, co-working together where your product comes under their permission. There's a number of different ways. It sounds like that it could be done and in partnership with uh, guys on the panel who are also part of implementation entity consumer group. We may be able to, if it turns into a real problem that crystallizes and stops you getting to market or stops this helping people, that's something that the FCA would be very happy to sit down with us and say, nationwide will walk in the room and say, hey, we want to see you regulator. We have this problem that we have solved if you will just be clear about the understanding of this rule. So I think there are three or four ways that our combined efforts can help you with that one. Rachel, did you want to come yeah, in? Yeah, no, no. Um, so you know, we deal with quite what, what is advice and what's not advice uh, financially on a daily basis. And that's, uh, you know, we're well versed in the conduct rules around that. So, and that's something that we, we bring to this process and that expertise. And the regulator are part of this process and are backing open banking for good and how we can accelerate things through the sandbox to get really early indications of what they are. I would kind of say this comes into the conversation of you know, we've kind of moved into that automated advice world as well. You know, that, that fine line is a, is a reality. And we've kind of proven that we can get over some of those hurdles. But it's also coming back to some of the conversation around how that digital and human experience then is integrated to make this a better experience uh, for, for, the, for our members and for consumers in general. But absolutely on the minds of everyone, I think. It's a great question. Thanks, Rachel. So over here, we had uh, two questions 
Hi, you first. Hey, so, uh, I'm Tom from Lotbox. We're a financial inclusion business. Uh, I would just point to, to Matt's point earlier. We were actually lucky enough to go to Step Change uh, and and do the, 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 the sort of the tour, sit with the, the advisors, and it was extremely insightful. So if you could provide that uh, as part of this, I'm sure a lot of people get a lot out of that. Uh, my question is actually for, for, for Nationwide. Uh, you know, we have, a, we have a product, we have a business, we have a proposition that we think is probably suitable for this. What's the next, I mean, what's the next step in this? You know, what's the application process? How's it going to work? What does it look like? How much do we need to spec that out ahead of the application process? How about planning and kind of mandates that it's going to take us to build this out. What, what should we be thinking about now going forward? A really good question. Would you mind handing the mic behind you to Samuel Green and White Shirt? Let's hear your question at the same time. I thought you might. I don't know the answer. Is that... No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was your... <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what we're supposed to do next. Uh, what was your well, question? Was... Uh, okay. So the, the, my question was about the, um, the IP issues. Um, Obviously, it's quite key. Is there any way where the small print or this so-called what you're entitled to is nationwide versus what we as developers own? Is it documented anywhere? Because I certainly couldn't find anything on that. Okay. Can so, I, so that's great because that mean, that's why I'm trying to take two questions at the same kind of time because you've, you've asked the same kind of question. Both those questions go to Phil. Okay. Um, so we have examples of the of an NDA agreement and an example of the contract that so I say examples are drafts they're just drafts of what we're trying to get done as soon as possible um, they're out there they're not to be taken away but they're there to be read and then asked further questions about um, so that's all out there uh, yes I'm sure you can take a photo but just don't tell the lawyer that I get no so I, I'll turn my back um, with regards to the application process. Um, clearly we've worked with these fantastic charities to, for, to get from them what are the real challenges that society is facing. Um, the reason for proposing those challenges through the document is to try and get solutions for those. So when people apply, what we're looking for are... So um, we've had some applications where people have said, this is our product, it's great. And you think, okay, so what, you, I'll spend two hours trying to understand what your product does and then have to evaluate whether it applies. And there's very little engagement from them with the challenge. So the application process asks, what challenge do you think your solution is appropriate for? What aspect of the challenge do you think that it meets? And then outline your solution, and that will explain to us how you think that your solution will meet that challenge. The temp there's a template on the back of the challenge document. Um, it's a very, very simple template. It, and there are many ways to do it. You can do it for a web form, you can do it for a Word document, you can even just upload an iPhone video of you going, this is the idea. Um, it's really about keeping the barriers as low as possible for application. But please bear in mind that when we're assessing them, we're trying to not only assess how good and valid and likely your solution is, it's also understanding how much engagement or how well engaged we feel that you will be with the challenge, with the charities, with the users so that on this journey that we want to go to take all go together on that actually start off at the same place that we end at the same place. that's really really helpful so we've had a couple of questions around some regulatory things we've had a couple of questions about what's in it from the charities and some answers from phil around how the application process goes what's next um, <coughs> there's an hour over drinks and food to be able to ask more questions. So I'm so sorry to those of you who are waving at me desperately wanting to ask your question over a microphone. If you'd like to ask it in an unmiked environment, we've got plenty of time and plenty of opportunity to engage with these good people. Um, also with, uh, in the marketplace, we have Accenture who are partners in this. So if you've got questions about their involvement, they'll wave at you and they'll tell you their answers. Uh, we also have uh, some excellent research from the Money Advice Service and from Bristol University Personal Finance Research Centre, who, uh, while they're not panelling with us today, have got acres and acres of really deep research, both in that um, consumer research space and in that academic space, uh, depending on how you're wired. Uh, so uh, that's what's next. But I'm going to hand to Rachel to close out. Thank you, panel. Um, probably so better to just stay seated because it's yeah. only two minutes. <laughs> Literally two minutes because I'm between you and drinks and food. But I just, I just wanted to uh, say thank you to Matt, to Joe, uh, to Michelle and Helen for joining the panel, for being here today. Um, also to Matt um, from the Open Banking team at Nationwide, but also to Phil and to Gareth in particular, who've really set up this seminar today. And I hope that today felt a bit different for everyone. I know there's been a lot of information download, but it is being recorded. 
The data will be available, the slides will be available, there's a lot of information over there. So I hope each and every one of you, going back to what we said earlier on, in terms of this being an opportunity to be curious about the challenges, each and every one of you is going away with something that you've learnt about the challenges that are faced by the financially squeezed, that you're inspired to take some action. I hope it's kind of adjusted your thinking um, in terms of what the ambition could look like. I'm aware there will be more questions, so let's try and get all of the questions um, answered today, but if not, then um, we, we can get in contact with us to get those um, questions answered. But you know, my plea is trust the process. We can work together on things and resolve any challenges that, that are faced. But please do feel inspired to uh, put in an application yourself or tell somebody that you know to put in an application so we can really kind of achieve our ambition, which is to resolve the problems, to fix the problems that are faced. So thank you very much for your time. Drinks and food are over there. The team are looking at you already. I can't say any drinks, though, so I don't know what's going on. Oh, they're there. Uh, thank you very much.